consecutive regular season non-conference game. They've won 11 in a row at home in the non-conference. And away we go between TCU and North Carolina. And it's Alyssa Uspi who controls the opening tip. Both these teams 1-0. North Carolina, a lopsided win over Jackson State from the SWAC. As Todd Williams gets to the cup and unable to finish. Rare miss by her. She's really got a great ability to get to the basket. Usually can finish through that traffic. It's Kenesha Godfrey who draws the foul. Godfrey, we talked about her in the open. 26 oh, points oh, against Lipscomb in that win. A seven-point win for TCU. That was her TCU debut. She sat out last season after the midseason transfer. But somebody that Reagan Peebley says is critical to our culture building. And that was what we just talked about. You know, that was really the, the conversation that we had with her revolved around building the team off the court before she started on the court and really pointed out that Gottfried is one of the players that have stepped up as a leader both on and off. Gottfried splits the pair, the transfer from Mississippi State, and early on we see a bit of pressure from TCU. So it'll be interesting to see how Carolina handles it. I don't think they're going to have much of an issue, but the one starter that they did lose from last year, Carly Littlefield, was their point guard. Anya Poole off to the right, and it's Uspi on the offensive glass to get the Tar Heels on the board. Alyssa came in, probably not one of the higher ranked recruits for Courtney in that class, in these juniors that they have, but she has really worked and bettered herself. And like I said in the pregame, she is on the Naismith watch list for the preseason. You saw a look at that TCU starting five. All five of them are playing in their first season, actually playing at TCU, which is, is remarkable. It is quite the juxtaposition between these two programs. It really is. It's two different ways of going about it, right? And there's no one way that's going to work. It's, it's your own cup of tea. And for one coach, they're building through recruiting and having those players develop in program. Another side is saying, hey, the transfer portal is out there. Let us go get winners. Let us go get proven talent. McColo floats and count the basket. The former Purdue Boilermaker from Quebec knocks down the floater. Early in this one, it's going the way that TCU wants things to go. Coach Peebley told us we got to take advantage of the free throw line and make sure we keep the other team off of it. Well, just a couple minutes in, and this is their second trip already. McColo, somebody who Reagan Peebley says can be a dark horse player for this team when she gets more comfortable. Yeah, when she talked about comfortability, it was within the system that TCU likes to play. And you can do as much off the court as you want, but you have to get time on the court with your teammates. And she just had been hampered leading up to the start of this season. And that's part of the reason she thinks she's just a little bit behind within the system. Osby attacks. Tough turnarounds. Osby silky smooth. Four points for Osby. That's her little patented weak side shot she played this off season with the three on three u.s team and really just impressed everybody that saw her kennedy todd williams whistled for the personal her first team's third and you talk about us against jackson state her 16th double double 19 and 10 also had five assists, three blocks, two assists, uh, two steals, pardon me, in 19 minutes. Was the only NBA, WNBA, or Division I player in the last 15 years with 15 plus points, 10 plus boards, five plus assists, two plus blocks, and two plus steals in under 20 minutes. In under 20 minutes is the thing that really jumps out to me. Great that you're stuffing that stat sheet, but you did it in a half. Colo in and out of the triple. Ellie's feed intercepted. Godfrey steps into a long jumper. Off the mark, rebound into the hands of Hudson. Todd Williams, transition triple. Looked down by Poole, who lays it through the contact. Carolina's going to have an advantage on the board. You've already seen them pull down two offensive buckets, their offensive rebounds, and turn them into buckets. And we have a pretty solid size advantage inside. And another turnover forced by the Tar Heels. Great pass. Usby muscles to the cup. Off the mark on that attempt, rebound by Cravens in her TCU debut, the former Nebraska Cornhusker. 
Look at McColo, one of six players to get to the squad from the transfer portal. Four of them are from Power 5 programs, so they have that high-level experience. And Coach Peepley told us, listen, we're not going out there and just looking for somebody that was a high recruit, didn't play, and now wants to transfer out of a Power 5 school. We want proven winners, players that have made an impact. And some of them, you look at players like an Emily Fisher out of American, four-year starter, and help them to get into the NCAA tournament. Tywell, the rejection in transition. Fisher wheels. Both teams a little bit sloppy here in the first couple of minutes. Macolo pivot up and under. Tar Heels might have wanted the walk there, but a tough finish by Macolo, who has four points. Good job keeping that pivot foot strong to the floor. Lost her defender on the fake pool and able to go back to the weak side. Entry feed to Usby. Kelly, dish out. Todd Williams missed one earlier. This time knocks it down. It's the facet of the game for Kennedy Todd Williams that if she becomes more efficient from three, really opens the doors to being one of those players like an Usby, like a Kelly that is looked at nationally. A great feed in the back door cut, but McColo could not finish. And Usby is fouled by Taiwo. Really good look. You want to finish that one if you're the Horn Frogs. Easy bucket. And then you commit the silly foul on the other end of it. It's the first on Taiwo, the former Iowa Hawkeye. First team foul of this opening quarter for TCU. Osby. There's Deja Kelly, a Naismith Award watch list honoree in the preseason. One of two on this Carolina roster. TCU just had a really, really good defensive possession, but those last 10 seconds are so crucial and you get it down within 10 and commit that foul, you allow North Carolina to now reset. And they did it on a switch there where I thought it wasn't necessary. Fisher defending Kelly was right there. This, it's the foul of McColo, second team foul of this opening quarter for the Horn Frogs. Hodgson has some breathing room and another triple for the Tar Heels. One of the best three-point shooters in the country. You don't want to leave her open. She was five of six from the field against Jackson State. 13 points played a team by 30 minutes. That shot rejected and it stays with TCU. And that will bring us to our first media timeout early on at the Tar Heels doubling up the Horn Frogs on this Saturday afternoon in Chapel Hill. It took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. Then we took a hard left in East Africa. A right at Baja. A 180 in the empty quarter. And that 65 degree incline at Hell's Revenge. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera's incredible. And you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. Best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? Well, we opened up the broadcast talking about Carolina's returning production. Kyle, it's a completely different story for TCU. I mean, you really can't get more opposite in the way that both programs have built the team they have out on the court. But you see the transfers, and we talked about it a little bit already. Coach Peebley trying to find winners, trying to find players that the way she put it was fit a role, fit a need that the team had that she was trying to put together. And we'll see how the experiment goes throughout the season. And she said it's been a process, a lot of obviously basketball work, but even outside of basketball, they volunteered 
at uh, Pay As You Can restaurants, cracking eggs, sweeping the floors. She said those experiences really helped build the team as McColo is whistled, whistled for the push-off. That is her second team's third of this first quarter. I think it's big that she recognizes that a team has to have chemistry off the court in order to have chemistry on the court. It doesn't necessarily mean that you all have to be friends, but you have to at least be able to know each other. I'll send it down to Natalie Boney with Moore and Coach Peebley. You guys mentioned how this is a pretty new team here at TCU, a lot of new faces, but Coach Peebley's actually been in this situation before. At Utah State, she had a brand new team. They never even had a program. She built that program from the ground up. She really prides herself on the use of the transfer portal and being able to acclimate players quickly because it's so important in today's game. Thanks, Natalie. And yeah, the Utah State experience is absolutely something she could build off of as she embarks in another challenging season in TCU. You. Yeah, the interesting thing to me is when she took that job and had that experience, nobody knew that that was going to be something she could pull on now. Transfer portal wasn't even a thought back then. Now she has six transfer portal players on this year's roster. Entry feed to Adams. It's a player Courtney Banghart was really high on. The jump she made from freshman to sophomore year, she expects her to be a real contributor to this team. Anya Poole draws the foul underneath. You know, and that's one of the reasons that for the Tar Heels and Coach Banghart, they didn't need to add anybody. She felt like they had additions. They were just on the bench. They were already developing some injuries that are still working their way back as well. They only have one newcomer. It's a true freshman, Paulina Perez, who in her debut had quite the performance. 13 points. Still have not seen Perez today. She did see a lot of playing time in that season opener. Granted, a game that Carolina had in hand, but those are where you want to get those freshmen, the newcomers, get them into the game, get that experience so they can start developing. She was tied for the team high, played 30 minutes in her college debut as Anya Poole rattles home the second. Largest lead of the game for UNC, up 13-6 to six in the latter portions of this first quarter. And as you see, TCU's offense has come to a bit of a standstill these last few minutes. You got to give Carolina's defense a lot of credit communicating on the switches. And honestly, a lot of times they haven't needed to. They've been able to stay in front of the ball handler. 29% from the floor so far for the Horn Frogs. Taiwo. Drive and kick, open look is rattled in. Evie Getz gets on the scoreboard after a scoreless opener against Lipscomb. And that's a nice job there by Taiwo to drive, get the defense to collapse, and find the open shooter. Gets redshirted last season, a top 10 recruit in the state of Texas coming out of high school. Kelly finds a pocket of space. On rebound to the hands of Lucy Ebay. Someone who they're very high on. Had a big performance of the opener against Lipscomb. Godfrey, deep triple. A little frustration, I think, there. Settling for a shot that early in the shot clock, you don't really want to see the team take. Kelly trips down the long rebound. Todd Williams stepped into a three and is whistled for the travel. Surprise that Kelly has missed back-to-back mid-range jumpers. That's where her sweet spot is. Kind of that old-school game of the mid-range jumper. Can also take it to the basket, but if you play too soft, she'll knock it down from deep, too. Yeah, Average 16 and a half points per game a season ago. High expectations. First team all ACC last year. You see her numbers and a really good three-point shooter as well. 36% from distance a season ago. Check out the defense here from Carolina. Ball pressure every time it's passed. Hands in the passing lane as well. Fisher rattles home a three. Another long ball for TCU. And they have shrunk this deficit down to just one. That's going to be key for TCU. Four of the six threes they had in their season opener were made by Godfrey. The rest of the team just two for 17. Ready a better start for the rest of this Horn Frog lineup. Good ball movement. Hodgson looking to answer, can't do so. And it's Fisher on the rebound. Fisher, Bradley, corner pocket. 
TCU in the driver's seat. A 9-0 run for the Horn Frogs. Watch Bradley in warm-ups, and I mentioned it to you. I said, I don't know what player it is because they have their warm-ups on, but she knocked down about eight or nine from the corner in a row. Yeah, you called the pregame, my friends, as Kelly loses it inside, and TCU can add to this two-point advantage. 9-0 run for TCU. Great way to close out the quarter. Getz draws the foul. That's the foul on Adams, her first team's fourth. Check out Bradley in the corner. Just setting up camp, waiting for that defense to collapse. Has faith in White, or excuse me, in Emily Fisher, that she's going to find her when the time is right. And, you know, when we call, talked with Coach Peebley, she said the connectivity between the team in game one was already there, and it, it caught us off guard a little bit, right? So many newcomers, and you're saying you're connected already. But that play, I think, is exactly what she was talking about. It did surprise all of us on the call. That was one of the very first things that she said that she learned about this team in the opener as Getz knocks down the first. But just goes to show that the work they did in the offseason pays off. Getz now up to five points, and TCU has opened up a four-point lead in the final minute. Paulina Paris just checked on for North Carolina. You see number two, bottom of your screen, the only newcomer on this Tar Heel roster, one of the top recruits in all of college basketball. Five turnovers are already in this first quarter. Harris off the mark of the triple as TCU looks to push. Andre Maliunga, watch with him. Good defense there from Destiny Adams, and you want to see that from your bigs, being able to come out, guard on the perimeter, as well as down low. So a 7.6 six second difference, shot clock to game clock. Go quick here, you get a two for one. Doesn't look like they're gonna try that though. Todd Williams, baseline attack, draws the block. Love the thought there from Godfrey. Just gotta get to the baseline and hold your spot. So Todd Williams will head to the line. It's a personal on eBay. That is her first. Both teams in the bonus for the final 28.5. And a change for TCU. As they'll bring on their tallest player, six foot seven, Patricia Morris. So two free throws for Todd Williams, 79% from the stripe a season ago, but was just three for six from the line against Jackson State. It was interesting, North Carolina, just 10 of 22 from the free throw line of the opener against Jackson State. What happened on that foul on the baseline? But Todd Williams not moving right. She looks a little bit hurt out there, possibly. Well, the injury bug has bit this Carolina team more times than they would like, that's for sure. Multiple players and minutes restrictions, some keep young players still out. Fisher. Bradley. Godfrey looking to put the icing of the cake in this opening quarter. At the horn, Godfrey leaves it short. But how about this? Through 10 minutes, TCU up by a pair. An 11-2 run to wrap up the opening stanza. Second quarter after this from Carmichael Arena. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible. And you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. Best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? It's Tim Tebow in a Verbo. where you get the whole place to yourself. So it's always just you and your gators. 
is the third meeting between these two programs. Kyle, they met a season ago. That matchup was not all too close. It wasn't very close, and for Carolina, all those players are going to remember that. TCU, this is the first time they've played the Tar Heels, but at TCU last year, playing in the home and home, and yeah, Carolina had control of that one early, ran away with it. Not the case so far today here in Chapel Hill, though. Carolina, a 27-6 edge in that fourth quarter. But today, Courtney Banghart's squad in a bit of trouble early. The Horn Frogs, a two-point advantage as we open things up in the second quarter. For Carolina, went completely cold on the offensive side of the ball, didn't score a field goal for the last five plus minutes and turned it over four times during that span too. That was the biggest thing. Emily Fisher, a tough finish. Yeah, you mentioned the turnovers. Both of these teams with five turnovers in that opening quarter. A little bit of a smaller lineup for Courtney Banghart and the Tar Heels to start things off in a second. And another missed three. Carolina settling for some triples against this 2-3 zone. 13-2 run for the Horn Frogs, looking to add to that. Knocks into the rebound. The Carolina had a couple of early offensive rebounds that they immediately turned into points. Since then, TCU's done a really good job of boxing out, limiting the Tar Heels to one opportunity each time down the court. Kelly, nice bounce pass is knocked away. And it's TCU basketball. Turnover number six for the Heels. So what have you seen so far from TCU that you've liked? I like the way they've been able to, like I just said, box out Carolina, limit the offensive chances, and then be efficient on the other end, even in transition, finding that open shooter, collapse the defense and work it around. Great ball movement. Fisher, the step over as it knocked away, and it's Todd Williams who lofts it over the head of Destiny Adams, a seventh turnover for UNC. When TCU has gotten in trouble is when they passed up that open shot and tried to take the extra dribble. Take the shot if it's there. Yes. Godfrey now. With 26 points against Lipscomb in her TCU debut. Here's Fisher, the American transfer, and she walked with it. Really good defense there by the freshman Paris, but also some great help defense by Carolina's bigs. I think that was Zelaya, uh, Zelaya who stepped in, forced Fisher to take the extra. It was Adams, and then you saw Todd Williams. All of them helping the freshmen out there on defense. Great team day by the Tar Heels. Well, this team was phenomenal defensively a season ago. Held opponents to just 56 points per game. Looking to keep that trend going in 22-23. And I think that's where you see a lot of the really good teams. If you're going to be a Sweet 16 or better team, you've got to start on the defensive side of things and then let the offense pick you up. But the defense can be there every game. Shots falling, that can alter one way or another. Talk about defense. The defense has been there all game so far for TCU. Another block inside. This time, Getz getting into the action. They continue to limit Carolina, who's shooting just 26% from the field. I think part of it for TCU is having veterans, the transfers. They understand that. It's not the freshman mentality of come in and basketball is all about scoring. Yeah, you got to put it in. But you got to stop the other team too. Oh, nice move inside. Kelly, little flip shot. No. Zelaya there. And they'll head the other direction. Great job of getting to the basket, but Carolina unable to finish down there in the paint here recently. Referees are letting them play through some contact. Shot altered, good defense there by Cravens, went straight up. Godfrey, Cravens, the Nebraska transfer, and a bit of a lazy pass, backcourt violation. Reagan Peebley talked so much in our call earlier this week about just, we have to be careful with our room for error, because against a team like Carolina, who is, as she put it, they're focused on March, we cannot afford to make mistakes. 
And she's 100% right. They've been very lucky and fortunate in this one that Carolina has made just as many mistakes as they have each team with eight turnovers. Let's send a court sign to Natalie Bodie. Yeah, guys, Coach mentioned how they had little room for error in this matchup. She said that because of her veteran lineup, she knew they were going to have to play clean, but that UNC looked like a team that was firmly focused on March, and she knew it would be a tough opponent and they'd have to rise to the occasion. Thanks, Natalie. And, and so far, it's, listen, there have been mistakes. They have comped it up eight times, but... 6.43 to go in the second quarter. They have a four-point lead. They'll take that. Ultimately, that's what you're looking at, right? right? Scoreboard is what determines whether you get a win or a loss at the end of this one. Bella Cravens whistled for that last personal. She now has two fouls. Second team foul of this second quarter for the Horn Frogs. TCU had a rough season last year. They're looking to win a first Power 5 road game since March 4th of 2021. And near the midway point of the second quarter, they have a little bit of a cushion as Paris steps into one. That is a freshman, folks. A true freshman. I like that, the use of the glass. You don't see that nowadays very often, right? You really don't. It's all about shooting it from beyond the arc and nothing but net. That's what you want to see, but I love the fundamentals there. Another shot off the backboard, this time off the mark from Bradley. And it heads down to Carolina in the foul. I remember my, my grandpa would always say, shoot it off the backboard, get the right angle, and, and it'll go in. Yeah, I mean, it, there, there's the... It's not geometry. I, I was not good at math. It is geometry. Yeah, geometry. Think, right? See, like I said, I wasn't good at math, but, you know, your mind knows how to work it. Hit Listen, that box, you're good to go. We're, we're broadcasters. We're not exactly. mathematicians. <laughs> A little bit of lapse on defense there from TCU. Miscommunication, and they didn't rotate around. Adams left open for the easy bucket. Their first point to the game for Destiny Adams. The sophomore from New Jersey. Top 20 recruit in her class of 2021. And TCU's offensive struggles have reared its head once again. Scoreless in the last four minutes. Godfrey looking to snap the spell. Nifty spin. And this shot ripped down by Kelly. Really impressed by the defense by Paris, the freshman. Kelly, nice look. Poole is fouled, and she'll head to the strike for two. Great job in transition. Poole got really deep set up. Kelly kept downhill so that she never let the defense get set, able to get down low and find her. Look at that. Feet down inside the charge circle. As a defender, you're helpless there. Anya Poole is one for two from the stripe. She already has five rebounds in 10 minutes today. A chance to give Carolina its first lead since a minute 54 to go in the first quarter. Poole, who started every game last season. Her nickname is Lasagna. Anya Lasagna. Heard worse nicknames. <laughs> Once again, Poole splits in the pair. Carolina back in front, first time since the latter portions of the opening quarter. ECU 0 for its last five from the field. Taiwo. Fisher wants to go to work on the freshman Paris. See offensively, nobody down in the paint for TCU. It makes it really difficult offensively when all five players are around the perimeter. And a steal leads to a foul. It's Kanisha Godfrey with the personal. Don't necessarily need a, per, a uh, post player, but you at least need somebody to show, get some movement through that zone and try and get a switch on the defense. 
Well, you see the steal right there, and Courtney Bangar talked so much in her call about defensive positioning, getting in passing lanes, forcing turnovers, and not just turnovers, but steals. They had 16 steals in the opener against Jackson State, and that led to a lot of wide open transition layups. You want easy buckets. Go ahead and get a steal and get out and run. Easiest that it gets as Hansen is a little bit short of the triple, but that is such a focal point of what they want to do defensively. Bradley, all the way, rejected. Destiny Adams said, not today. A close game in the second quarter, and Destiny Adams makes her presence felt. Quite the swap to bookend the midway point of the second quarter. Let your heart be light From now on Our trouble will be out of sight Unlike the other guys, T-Mobile has price lock. Switch now and we won't raise the price of your talk, text, and data. It's Tim Tebow in a Verbo. Where you get the whole place to yourself. So it's always just you and your Gators. Able to shoot the ball too well, but TCU, they have hit a handful of triples so far. Three of them so far. Started with Gats over in the corner, and then they really started moving the ball well. I like that with a little bit of space, they take the three. But this is the one that really was them at their peak during that run, the end of the first half. Yeah, Fisher running the point, able to kick it out to Bradley, who was spotted up in transition. They ended the first quarter on a 13-2 run. Carolina has since retaken the lead, but at this point of the game, I don't think there are many people out there who probably would have expected TCU to be within a point, 441 to go in the second. Surprised at how much both teams have struggled offensively. They've caught the ball up. They haven't really shot at a high percentage. Both teams under 35 so far from the field. Early season cobwebs, perhaps? Absolutely, 100%, just early season. No coach is gonna be happy about it, but you gotta kind of expect it a little bit. Just the second game of the season for both of these teams. Both teams 1-0. UNC a big win over Jackson State. TCU took down Lipscomb. And turnover number 10 for TCU with a travel by Tommy Taiwo. Another really good job of communicating defensively for the Tar Heels. Knowing where each other are on the court, when you need to switch, when you don't. Carolina looking to crack the code of this 2-3 zone. Paris can do just that. And again, off the mark and a triple. The Tar Heels have gotten the looks. They just haven't been able to knock them down. Just two of 10 from distance. Bradley. Pull up is too strong, rebound by Adams. Deja Kelly, who is 0 for 5. Tough pull up. That's what she can do. That's what she does so well. The mid-range, gotta respect it. On the floor, she can pull up at any time. 7-0 run now for the Tar Heels. As you see, just one of six. Deja Kelly. A preseason uh, Naismith Award watch list selection. Deep three is well off from Tara Manumalaiga. Not the shot you're looking for if you're the Horn Frogs. Gonna have to make some adjustments when they get in the locker room. Find some ways to get some players flashing through the lane. Just get some movement. They seem very stagnant to me on offense. Well, you want lane presence? They'll bring in the 6'7", Patricia Morris. TCU has missed its last eight field goals. Despite that, they only trail it by three against the 12th ranked team of the country. So they're playing some pretty good defense on their side of the floor as well. Just what side of the coin do you want to look at? The good side or the bad? Aspi finds that soft spot of the zone and makes TCU pay nine in a row for the heels. It's the good side of the coin for Carolina. When she's on the court, they're just a different team on both sides of the floor. And again, a steal. It's number four for North Carolina. 
two on one. Kelly to Uspi. That dynamic duo gives the Tar Heels their largest lead of the game. You gave that stat about under 20 minutes and all of the stats she accrued. Six minutes of play, eight points, couple of rebounds, a block as well for Uspi. TCU will take a timeout. 2.51 to go in the second. North Carolina, a bit of breathing room here at Carmichael. Took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. Then we took a hard left in East Africa. A right at Baja. A 180 in the empty quarter. And that 65 degree incline at Hell's Revenge. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible. And you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. Best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? Twelfth-ranked North Carolina holds a 26-19 lead over TCU. John Gross, Kyle Straub, Natalie Bodie here at Carmichael Arena. The Heels with a seven-point lead in large part due to Alyssa Uspi, who is one of those players who is on a minute restriction. You played with Team USA three on three this summer. Just a lot of wear on the body and Coach Banghart wants to be careful with her. She knows how key she is to them making that long run in March like they want to. But in the meantime, it gives some other players some opportunity, John, to get out on the court, get some experience and integrate themselves with a team where come March, now you have some depth. And you see Paulina Paris who just traveled with it. That's somebody who Courtney Banghart did put on the floor due to some of these injuries and minute restrictions. We talked about it before, but Paris played 30 minutes in her college debut. And in large part, just due to a lack of numbers. And you know how big it is come the postseason. Now that's an easy push off there. Good sell by Kelly, but an easy one for the ref to pick up. But my point was with guards specifically, backcourt play come the postseason, that dictates how far you're going to go. And you're going to need depth in case somebody gets hurt, in case you have foul trouble. Having a third player like Paulina to handle the ball, that'll be key for Carolina. Must be on the kick out. And three second violation, another turnover for Carolina. So 23 combined turnovers for these two teams. Kyle, we're not even at halftime. Yeah, it has definitely not been the cleanest game by any stretch of the imagination. And I think that's going to be a key, key message from both coaching staffs is we need to clean things up. Godfrey, you just, just great one help point oh, bait. Oh, had a player right in front of her. She could have passed that one too. And a hard foul underneath. It'll stay here. And Anya Poole is a bit shaken up. And she's upset with the foul call there. They're trying to box out. Got into the legs of Morris a little bit. And because Poole had her come down on her, I think that's where she felt. I didn't commit a foul. Why is that whistle going against me? But I think that's a good call from the ref, though. Under two minutes to go in this first half. The scoring struggles continue for TCU. Paris got beat right there by Godfrey. She just didn't keep the ball close to the body. Allowed Paris to reach around and knock it, knock it away. Just one for 11 from the field in the second quarter are the Horned Frogs. Open look for Fisher and she snaps the cold spell. Quickly in transition, Uspi, top shot. Uspi up to 10 points in the second quarter. See how well she runs the floor too. First player down court, first player back on defense. And they'll run the floor once again. Numbers for the heels. Oh, Great feed, look. 
Harris sways it in. I'm telling you, this Carolina team with Utsby on the floor is just different. And you see this run they're going on. It looks so much better, more appealing to the eye. 15-3 run for the Tar Heels. Who have converted on five of their last five. Taiwo jacks one up. And they're in the other direction. Ten points for Usby. She was the one who got back on defense, forced that miss, and you see her trailing just in case. Paris isn't able to finish, but the freshman picks up her second bucket. Great running there by Carolina. And how about the bounce pass from Eva Hanschen, who has now been thrusted into that fifth starting role after Carly Littlefield graduated, the only Tar Heel starter not back from last year as Kelly works to the cup and comes up short. So TCU can hold for one final shot if they want to. Doesn't look like they do. Godfrey, a little shimmy in transition. Hodgson uses the screen. Hodgson denied. It's the 6 7 Morris. Shot is after the horn, but at the break, Carolina a 30 to 24 lead over TCU. I think a little bit closer than a lot of people would have expected at this point. Bev, a little bit closer than I think Carolina really wanted it to be. If you're TCU, you feel good going in that locker room, but both teams really need to clean up the turnovers. A six point cushion. For North Carolina, we will send it courtside to Natalie Bodie, who is joined by head coach Courtney Banghart. Coach, your team erupted for points at the end of the half. What started working offensively? You know, we shouldn't make a lot of shots in the first quarter there. We got good looks, just couldn't couldn't connect. It's a 40-minute game. What will be the message in the locker room to your squad? Well, I think we got to be better in the gaps defensively to give us a little bit more opportunity to score. We get to play with better pace on the offensive end, regardless of what defense they're in. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck. Happy to do it. Thanks guys. Thanks coach and thanks Natalie. Carolina a six point lead at the break. A couple of tough buckets but it's Alyssa Usby who leads all scorers with 10. Halftime at Carmichael in this ACC versus Big 12 matchup. It took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. Then we took a hard left in East Africa. A right at Baja. A 180 in the empty quarter. And that 65 degree incline at Hell's Revenge. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible and you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. Best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? Welcome into this ACC Network Halftime Report. I'm Kelsey Riggs. We'll get you out to the game you're watching in just a few minutes. But first of all, we know it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. And man, did we get off to a good start at ACC Basketball Tip-Off this year. Here's a look back at some of the best moments. It is a beautiful morning here in the Queen City as we welcome you into Uptown Charlotte hoop season is almost upon us. Coach Westmore, who apparently didn't get the bright colors memo. Coach, what happened? Uh, I didn't want to take away, I didn't want to take away y'all shine. Okay. You know, I, don't, I don't want to be the shade. It was supposed to be a segment on what I can juggle, but I just, I was like, oh, might as well, and I just threw it behind me. I was on the juggling team. <laughs> There's a juggling team? At my elementary school. That's all you can ask, is like for your coach to be a great basketball coach. And we have a great basketball coach. He's the smartest man in the world, so I, I want to be with the smartest man in the world. <laughs> Wait, he says that? Yeah. <laughs> I want a uh, Forever 21 uh, shopping spree with Deja. I think you could pick out a nice outfit for me for the next oh, Carolina game, right? Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of blue. These transfers that you got, Ashley Wusu and Taylor Soul, I know you're excited about them. 
best hour of my life. <laughs> of my recruiting life. Yeah, right. <laughs> Better clarify that. My, my wife probably watches. Let's see it. Let's see the number two. Yeah. You're a big hour Iowa fan. I don't have all the wisdom to give. I'm still trying to learn some too. But I have a lot to give. So if you have it to give, you should give it. You should give it freely. And, and you should try and, and help your players be great. Right. Being able to come back, being 20 minutes, 30 minutes away from home, get to go home, my mom cooks me dinner sometimes. <laughs> uh, I actually got a puppy too, so she helps out with my Oh, life. yeah. Since I've been sitting here on this desk since 8 a.m., you, without question, have the best nail game of any. Say it, say it. Nobody is in You say your favorite animal is a flamingo. I mean, <laughs> because you think you look like a flamingo. You're skinny. Your favorite color is pink, and you like being by the water. Quote, I give flamingo. <laughs> that is amazing. I recently looked up what Stitch was, and I didn't know he was a koala. <laughs> oh, from Lilo. Oh, about the Disney. Good reference. I didn't know Disney what he was on either. the ACC I network. Who is taller right now? Did we figure it out? Yeah. Oh, if they give her a boost, that's not fair. <laughs> I'm still the tallest person. No, I, I am taller. Always so fun to visit with the coaches and the players at ACC tip-off. And you take a look at the ACC predicted order of finish. Louisville, of course, the team that made it to the Final Four last year, picked to win the league. We will see how it all plays out when it is all said and done here in the college hoop season. And in the meantime, the ACC PM crew has you covered weekdays, 4 o'clock right here on ACC Network. And as always, Streaming live on the ESPN app. They'll keep you updated on what's going on around the league throughout the week. Enjoy the second half. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible. And you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? It's Tim Tebow in a Verbo. Where you get the whole place to yourself. So it's always just you and your gators. Halftime at Carmichael Arena, 12th ranked North Carolina holds a 30 to 24 lead over the TCU Horned Frogs as we welcome you back into our broadcast. John Gross alongside Kyle Straub. Kyle, you have TCU, a team picked last in the preseason poll in the Big 12 against one of the top teams in the country, but this is still anybody's ball game at halftime. The turnover is the ultimate equalizer. Really hard to score the ball when you're coughing it up. 25 turnovers between these two teams has kept it low enough scoring that TCU stayed in it despite having a really tough time scoring the ball. Take a look back at some of the first half highlights, and we did see a couple three pointers from the Horn Frogs. Yeah, it was really the only thing they had consistently going for them. Four of 12 from beyond the arc in that first half. Three of them came in the first quarter. They did a good job of forcing the Carolina defense to collapse on the driver, kicking it out to the open ball handler. But Alyssa Usby on the other side is just so much to handle. A reason that she's on the Naismith watch list preseason All ACC leads the way with 10 points, and she's done it in just nine. Nine minutes out on the court so far. Really versatile offensively. Helps to get the Carolina break going with her defense, but also will get out and run and be rewarded on the other side of it. Let's take a look at the first half stats in this matchup. And as you see, both offenses had some major issues shooting the basketball. They did, and especially for Carolina beyond the arc, a team who's got multiple three-point shooters that can knock it down for over 35, 40%, just two of 10 in that first half. I saw a change, though, as that second quarter went on where they stopped shooting from distance and starting attacking the basket a little bit more. Let's send a court side to Natalie Boney with TCU head coach Reagan Peebley. Coach, your team held the lead for most of the beginning of that first half. What did you like from your team? Well, I think we came in here not to just participate in this game. We came to win, and uh, we worked really hard in this offseason and building a toughness about us and a collective toughness, and I'm proud of where we're at with that. A lot of turnovers from both sides in that first half. How do you clean it up in the second? Well, I think we got to be ready to be the aggressor and not responsive to a team being aggressive. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thanks. Guys. Thanks, Natalie, and 
Well, North Carolina, one of just many teams expected to have top-notch seasons in the ACC. Five, count them, five teams in the uh, preseason AP Top 25. That's just the preseason. Who knows how the season will right? go and teams that flow in and out. I think six, seven, maybe even eight different teams able to find themselves ranked throughout this season. You know in the ACC, if you don't come to play, especially on the road, you're going to have a tough night. And it's remarkable how many teams are considered contenders in this conference. As you look at some of the upcoming matchups for a couple of the top teams in the ACC, that Louisville at Belmont matchup should be interesting, but these teams should be able to come out of there with wins. It's always interesting when you see a top-ranked team going on the road to one of the non-power conference five teams and going to Belmont is going to be a tough test for Louisville. I like challenging a team early. Listen, it's not college football. If you lose a game, you're not out of the running for the national championship. That's for sure. But still early in the season, these teams looking to pick up some wins, pad those records, and here are some of the upcoming games on ACC Network. And uh, as you see, a couple interconference matchups, an intra-conference matchup as well. Uh, I'm always a fan of the Palmetto State showdown, South Carolina versus Clemson. But wow, South Carolina is looking very good. Not a surprise, though. Good luck to anybody that has to play the Gamecocks this <laughs> year. But I'm with you. Those interstate games, even though it may not be a ranked first ranked or even in conference, you get South Carolina Clemson together, there's going to be some fireworks. Absolutely will be. Remember a season ago, North Carolina had the closest game in South Carolina's national championship run. So both coaches rallying the troops. Kyle, what do you want to see from these two teams in the second half? I think I'd like to see cleaner basketball. That's the, the real easy answer for Carolina. I want to see some continuity when Alyssa Utsby is not on the floor because when she is, Clearly, they're a better team, but when she's not on the floor, who can step up and be that go-to player offensively for them? On TCU's side, I'd like to see them, like their coach just said, be a little bit more aggressive. They got the lead. They kind of sat back a little bit. Keep going. Try and extend that lead. Got a good look at Alyssa Osby. Ten points in that first half. A remarkable five of six from fields. And as we kickstart the second half, 12th ranked North Carolina, TCU going at it and out of the gates. A nifty bounce pass and a wide open on your pool layup. It's a really great play drawn up in the locker room. Kelly coming over to the corner. You're expecting a screen if you're the defender. Instead, she goes around you, forces the help defense and an easy bucket for pool. Carolina again getting the passing lanes. Fisher able to recover. And she walked with it. Kyle, you kind of get the sense that the first few minutes of this third quarter can really dictate the rest of this game. Yeah, if North Carolina can come out here, play efficiently, go on a run like they did towards the end of the first half, they can really build some separation between themselves and the Horn Frog. But the flip is, if TCU can find a way to go on a run like they did at the first quarter, they can get themselves right back into this. And you go into the fourth quarter in a close game, it's, it's up in the air. Must be missed, but then drew the foul underneath. It's a personal on Bella Cravens. Talked about the first half, how they're just different with her on the court versus off the court. Well, looked up some of the numbers. When Utsby is on the court, Carolina is outscoring TCU 25 to 8 with the two they scored in this half. When she's been on the bench, it's been the opposite. Just seven for Carolina, 16 scored though for TCU. That speaks volumes. The impact that she has is remarkable. That last foul was actually on Godfrey. Quarter three, Todd Williams. Her second made triple of the ball game. She had a career high 20 points against Jackson State in the opener earlier this week. Was three of six from distance in that one. Coach Banghart calls her the Scotty Pippen of this team. She can do anything they ask of her. You saw her play anywhere from the one to the four in the season opener. She calls her the Scotty Pippen. She calls Destiny Adams the Dennis Rodman as Kelly gets to the hole and has her second midfield goal of the afternoon. 23 is retired, so I don't think you can find a Jordan on the team. But, I mean, if they want to model themselves after the 90s Bulls, they had some success. Just a little bit of success. <laughs> Strong start out of the gates for Carolina. 7-0 run to open up this third quarter. Cravens inside, off the mark. Her first field goal attempt of the season. Usby 
from downtown. He's missed both of the field goals this half, but Poole is there, and Poole is whistled for the offensive. Some energy there from Godfrey. They get this TCU team going a little bit. Great rebound here from Poole. See her lower that shoulder. You already have the size mismatch. No need to add the little extra in there and get that call against you. Evie Gantz just re-entered for TCU at five points in the first half. She replaces Roxanne Bacolo. Taiwo has some breathing room. Taiwo sinks it. TCU on the board in the third quarter. A little better mo uh, movement offensively there from TCU, and they got the mismatch with Poole on Taiwo. That was first point of the afternoon. Nice look to Poole, unable to finish. And Kelly whistled for the first arm ball. That's her second, team second of this third quarter. But Kelly's been a bit quiet so far. Four points, two of eight from the fields. Does have five assists though. And that's the big thing with her being in a position where she's going to be handling the ball more than she did last year. Got to find ways where you can contribute if the shot's not falling because you're the way the offense is going to go. Great ball movement, a miss from Fisher, but Cravens has it. And quickly as it ripped away by the aforementioned Kelly, who finds a running up speed through contact and will shoot two. Great touch on that pass over the top there from Kelly. Put it in, as they say in football, a spot where the, only the receiver is going to be able to get it. Just over the defender's head and Usby. Watch her with the fingertips, knock it down, and then bring it in. Great job, and a couple of players who three years on the court together showing just a little bit. Looking a bit like Drake May. Of course, both these football teams have uh, some big matchups today. That's Usby. It's on the first. The potential, I think it would be a hard way for it to happen, but ten, a potential look at a college football playoff matchup? It could happen. TCU is still undefeated. Carolina just one loss. Offensive rebound big there for Carolina. TCU had done a really good job, John, of not allowing the Tar Heels to get multiple opportunities, and they're going to have to get back to really boxing out, playing tough down low if they want to chip into this 11-point deficit. Bella Cravens was just whistled for her third foul, so we'll see how Reagan Peebley decides to play this. Cravens has three, Getz has three as well for TCU. That'll be something to monitor. Todd Williams. Hodgson now inside for Poole. The spin, the drop step, the finish. I love that. They went right after Cravens. You just picked up the third foul. Let's go ahead and go right after you. And if you want to play rough, you get that fourth foul and have to go to the bench. Otherwise, easy bucket down low. Nice move by Godfrey on the other end. She'll head to the free throw line for two. Third team foul against the Tar Heels in this third quarter. Now this is another thing that TCU did well in the first quarter, but got away from in the second, and that was attacking the basket, drawing the foul against Carolina, and getting to the free throw line. Alexandra Zelaya re-enters as Anya Poole heads to the bench. You see Poole left side of your screen, exits with eight points, three of five shooting, six rebounds, but now four fouls. First free throw is pure from Godfrey. She was the number 40 recruit in the class of 2021 per ESPNW. Went to Mississippi State where she played just two games. And then last year, midseason, transferred to TCU. Therefore, had to sit out. And is in just her second game as a Horned Frog. It's her story, and I don't know the exact reason for the transfer, but her story, her situation is why I am in favor of the transfer portal. Listen, it's not going to work out every time, so allow the kids to go and at one time, try and find a better situation for themselves. I'm completely with you. It also allows coaches to retool quickly if, if they are short on numbers, like TCU is, uh, was, I should say, entering this season. Six transfer portal additions in the offseason for the Horned Frogs. One of them, Bella Cravens, who can't finish. Gotta have that finish if you're Cravens. 
had a good look at the basket. Well, Cravens was a pretty reliable starter at Nebraska. Average six and six in a couple of seasons there after spending time at Eastern Washington. And this time it's TCU getting the passing lanes. Tyro coast to coast. Great read from Tyro. That's not a pass that Hodgson, who's being moved into a ball handler, point guard-esque role, not going to make that one again, that cross-court pass. Press break to perfection, but Usby can't hit the jumper. And a loose ball foul goes against Carolina. That is the first on Usby in the fourth against the Tar Heels. So TCU in the bonus for the final 523 in this third quarter. And after falling behind by double figures, they can now cut this back to single digits. We we'll see eBay re-enters for TCU. eBay, another one of those transfers, spent the last two seasons at Central Arkansas where she averaged a double-double a season ago. Taiwo finds eBay. eBay could stick it. Somehow it does not fall. Battling down there, though. Because of that effort and hustle, they're going to keep possession. It was eBay who followed her own miss. Found herself in a tough situation deep under the basket once she had possession. But look at this. She's the only Horn Frog down there. Three, four white jerseys. She's getting on the court before everybody else. eBay at her third college. She was at Central Arkansas. Before that was at Collin College, a junior college where she was actually coached by Reagan Peebley's father. That's how Reagan Peebley knew about her. So when eBay entered the portal, it was a no-brainer as Taiwo uncorks from distance, can't stick it. Again, a loose ball, and it's a held ball possession arrow to TCU. 4.46 to go in the third quarter. The Tar Heels have a little bit more breathing room, but still anybody's ball game in this ACC versus Big 12 showdown. Have yourself a merry little Christmas Let your heart be light From now on our trouble will be out of sight T-Mobile won't raise the price of your talk, text and data Plus families get over $225 in benefits every month It's Tim Tebow in a Verbo where you get the whole place to yourself. So it's always just you and your Gators. TCU had a, a bit of a rough go of it last season, six and 22 on the year. Kyle, preseason this year in the Big 12, they were picked to finish last, but Reagan Peebley is looking to turn around this program. That COVID pause that they had last year across so many sports, you saw so many teams struggle coming back from it. It just wasn't easy to keep going in the middle of a season like they had to. But you're right, complete overhaul of the roster. You bring in veteran transfers and all of that doesn't matter because they weren't a part of the team last year. This is all brand new for them. TCU will restart the action as Kelly has the steal on the inbounds. Deja Kelly up to six points. An eighth steal for the Tar Heels as Hodgson corrals the miss. Four of those steals come from Kelly. We're talking about offensively, not her normal self numbers wise, but beating other players, getting them set up, creating opportunities by causing turnovers and taking the ball away. eBay called for the personal her third team fourth, but isn't that the mark of a great player that they can contribute in so many ways? 100%, and it's the mark of a third-year player. I don't know that freshman Deja Kelly does what she does in this game if the offense isn't there. A physical move. Alexandra Zelaya getting deep in the paint for the bucket. Zelaya, another one of those juniors who came in that first big re freshman recruiting class for Courtney Banghart and may not be the big name, but she's going to have some key minutes down the stretch as well. Largest lead of the game for the Heels, and they can add to that an offensive foul against Fisher. And 
That's Fisher second, team's fifth. So both teams in the bonus for the final four minutes of this third quarter. We said we wanted to see both teams clean it up uh, uh, as far as the turnovers go. They absolutely have. Well, on cue, it is a takeaway. Fisher unable to put it home. In transition, Todd Williams all the way. When you don't make a bunny on one end, it turns into an easy bucket on the other. Regan Peebley talked about this, the, this small margin for error. They have to be careful with the room for error, and so far we've seen them make some mistakes as of late. Instead of a 12-point lead and you having a little bit of momentum, it goes back the other way for an easy Kennedy Todd bucket, and it's a 16-point Carolina lead. Those are the little things that she's talking about, and ultimately TCU will look at this game, and I think they'll learn from those little things. They'll be different towards the end of the year for them. Well, what an opportunity this is for TCU. So many new players, and they get a chance to go against one of the top teams in America. Gets, spins, leaves it off. eBay, again, a missed layup. Fisher, open. She can't put it home. Nothing going for the Horn Frogs. And the loose ball ends up with Ty Williams. They're giving it their all. They're battling. They just can't find a way to get it to drop. Count the basket. Kennedy, Todd Williams, the end one. Talk about Alyssa Utsby being a difference maker. So is Kennedy Todd Williams. 12 points from her, four of seven shooting. The ability to take it up the court like a guard, but finish th uh, strong through some contact like a forward. Todd Williams now with 12 points in double figures for the 16th time in her last 19 games. As the follow is put home by Destiny Adams. Carolina is starting to impose their will on TCU now. Second time they've had a run of three plus minutes TCU has where they haven't scored the ball. Nearly another turnover. Open look for Getz. No. And Kelly has the miss. Five rebounds for Kelly. She has six points, five boards, seven assists. Illegal screen on Adams. She's still moving. Second on Adams. It's a timing thing. Early in the year, not quite on the same page. Remember last year, it was limited action for Destiny Adams, but highly touted recruit coming out of high school. Courtney Banghart says she has made a huge jump from last year to this year. There were times last year, if you watched Carolina, when she would be on the court where you would see flashes of why she was such a highly touted recruit, but also a little bit of a deer in the headlights. Not quite ready for D1 basketball, but they really like where she is at and the work she's put in in the offseason. TCU's 19th turnover. They only had 11 turnovers against uh, Lipscomb in the opener. They also had 14 assists to go with that. Obviously a, a different team in North Carolina compared to Lipscomb, but still these issues have been a major reason why they're now down 20. As Kelly knocks it down and the foul. Because of the mid-range jumper before, you've got to honor it. Nice little behind the back to create the separation. So one shot for Kelly. Up to eight points, make that nine. I know. And Reagan Peebley wants to talk things over. A couple of 1-0 squads, but a big third quarter for the Heels. They're plus 17 in this frame alone. Back after this on ACC Network Extra. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible. And you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. 
Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. Best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? It's Tim Tebow in a Verbo. Where you get the whole place to yourself. So it's always just you and your gators. After a relatively quiet first half, Deja Kelly has come up big in this third quarter. She left the season opener in the third quarter, rolled her ankle. I think she's doing okay. Nine points, five assists. She's also tipped in. Uh, sorry, it's seven assists, five rebounds, and four steals. Flirting with that triple-double. I don't know if she'll have quite enough floor time. See how the rest of this one goes. Natalie Bodie has more on the Star Junior. Interestingly enough, guys, UNC was one of the last schools that Deja Kelly spoke to. She was even hesitant to talk with the Heels, but her mom knew Coach Banghart. She decided a conversation wouldn't hurt, and after that conversation, she said that she didn't want to impact just a team. She wanted to impact a program, and ultimately, that's what led her to Carolina. It's a great story, and she was a highly touted recruit. She details her journey earlier this week in an article that she penned to the Players' Tribune. She talked about how she started playing at the age of three at a church league, was the only girl in her team, and her first basket, she made it in the wrong basket. And that was the start of her hoops career as Paris rims out of the triple. Adams is there, lays it in. Does it matter what basket you make it in in third grade as long as you're making it in a basket? I don't think so. <laughs> at that point, you're just happy to put it in. Layup off the mark. She wrote it. She made it a goal board as well in third grade. Listed three goals. She wanted to be a McDonald's All-American, get a college offer, and then play in the WNBA. She's achieved the first two, and the third one seems to be in her future as well. The third one is coming. Whether yes. it's after this year or next year, she'll make that decision. But it is in her near future, though. Bradley whistled for the personal. The fouls and the rebound disparity really starting to pile up on, EC, uh, on TCU. 36-22 total rebound to Carolina. Kelly sinks on the first, now up to 10 points. Both teams in the bonus for the rest of this quarter. This is the largest lead of the game for North Carolina. Into the game for the Eva Hobson will re-enter. She replaces Deja Kelly. 11 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds. And she's gotten the job de done defensively as well. She has, and as you see her go down the line, slap hands with teammates, three of them in street clothes on the end of the bench. All three possibly going to be back for Carolina this year. They will be big keys if they can get that depth. Look at the Tiani Keys, the Kayla McPhersons of the world. Key, a really, really highly touted recruit last year in the, the quote-unquote secret scrimmage that teams have against South Carolina is where she got the injury. But reportedly before that, the Gamecocks, who won the national title, had no answer for her. Carolina can hold for the final shot of what has been a fruitful third quarter. A 27-6 edge in this quarter alone. The same edge they had in the fourth quarter against TCU last year. Todd Williams, deep three, off the mark. Buzzer beater, triple. No good from Adams. And we will head to the fourth quarter. A comfortable lead, an emphatic performance in this third quarter. 27 point edge for the Heels at Carmichael Arena. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro, it's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible and you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. Best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? It's Tim Tebow in a Verbo. Where you get the whole place to yourself. So it's always just you and your Gators.
Back here at Carmichael Arena, this was a six-point game at halftime. A bit of a different story after that third quarter. Carolina offense came to life in the second half. 27 points in that third quarter, almost outscoring TCU's total to this, total, uh, to this point in the game. 27 to six edge for the Heels in that third. That was the same advantage they had last year in the fourth quarter in Fort Worth against TCU. Out of the gates, nice cut, nice feed, and the finish from Adams. We are told she was gonna be a contributor this season. 8.6 rebounds in the game now. Good oh. defense from Zelaya to get that jump ball. Stays with TCU though. Iwo and Zelaya, the ones who got tangled up. Abby Getz re-enters for TCU. Trailing by 29, its largest deficit of the game. They've been marred by turnovers, fouls, rebounds. Fisher traverses the lane and will shoot too. But you look at this program, the fact that they're at least willing to challenge themselves, right? They, they haven't won a Power 5 road game since March of 2021, but their first road game of 22-23 is against the 12th ranked team of the country. That's part of playing the, the home and home. You're not 100% sure on what that second one is gonna be like, but I think like you said for TCU, you have to challenge yourself. You can play a lot of games that are real easy to win, but how much do you learn about yourself and how much do you learn about your team when you play a team that is gonna be their Sweet 16 last year, hoping for better this year for Carolina, you really can use that as a measuring stick to, this is where we wanna be. How much work do we have to do to get there? And after those two makes from Fisher, she is now two of two from the stripe with 10 points on the afternoon. Tough take from Adams on the follow. Another bucket inside for Destiny Adams, who's up to 10. Fourth Tar Heel, double digit in the scoring margin. Gets with 12 to shoot. Bradley, one dribble pull up, clanks it. Zelaya on the rebound. You look at Carolina, they've won 16 consecutive regular season non conference games and Seems like they're en route to number 17, but that's one of the marks of an elite program when you can take care of business. At home, it doesn't matter who it's against, you always want to win, but especially those non-conference games, they're almost must-wins to me if you want to be one of the elite programs. Tywo, deep triple. Tywo sinks it. Her second made three of the game. She was a very efficient shooter at Iowa, albeit in a more reserve role, but 42% from deep as a Hawkeye in her career. Hodgson draws the foul and will shoot two. On you know, the game, they're not shooting terribly from beyond the arc, TCU, just under 32%. Probably wanting to be in that 35 to 40 range, but considering overall as a team, you're shooting 24%, 32 doesn't look too bad behind the arc. It does not. And their ratio has come with the turnovers, 20%. Uh, pardon me, 20 turnovers, 24% from the fields. Hodgson, pure on the first. Five points for her. She is the only new starter in this Carolina starting five. That returns four starters from last year, 86% of its scoring, 86% of its rebounding as well. You know, didn't start last year for Carolina, but because Courtney Banghart only had what she says a five and a half player rotation, Hodgson was a big part, played in all but one game last year, in major minutes in all of them. Great defense there from him. We'll send it to the direction. We talk so much about the transfers for TCU. Carolina's got their own in even. Transfer from William and Mary, her second year in Chapel Hill. The former CAA Rookie of the Year. And even look at her role from a season ago. Yeah, she was a bench player all season, but remember what she did in the ACC tournament, that buzzer beater to force overtime against Virginia Tech? She played some pretty big minutes. She did, and you know, the thing that you don't see, but if you talk to the team, if you talk to Coach Banghart, that she brings to the team that's so important, is she's a vocal leader. She's that type of player who's gonna hold everybody else, including herself, accountable and we'll call you out if you're not doing what you need to do. After a couple missed Tar Heel layups, it's Fisher. 
You know, I actually heard a story about her. This goes back to last year, but her very first practice, practice number one in a Tar Heel uniform, drill number one, and they run it once, and she stops and says, Coach, can we stop this and talk to the team, address them? She didn't like the way that it was being run. That's the very first drill, the very first practice. That is confidence, that is leadership, as Usby feeds Perez, who rattles out. Hodson is a fascinating player, one of seven siblings. She comes from a basketball family. Her parents and two older brothers played in college. How about the answer from Evie Getz? These threes continue to fall for TCU. And that's a part of their game that they're going to rely on heavily. We've seen it throughout this game today. They don't have a huge presence down in the paint, not offensively at least, so they're going to have to score from beyond the arc. Ospi has 11 points, five and nine shooting. She has not scored in this second half. It is whistled for the offensive. Great job by Getz, moving her feet, staying in front of Alyssa Utsby here. Great job, sliding those feet, never turned her hips. Second on Usby, the second on the Tar Heels in this fourth quarter as well. Bradley steps into one, leaves it short. Morris at six foot seven gets on the deck, held ball, position arrow to the Tar, uh, tar Heels. Couple minutes since Carolina put one in the bucket. Kelly back out on the court. Still a comfortable cushion for North Carolina. Up by 25. They've led by as many as 29. The step over from Usby. That is some special footwork, my friend. Being able to finish with either hand gives her that versatility of being able to go left Go right, you get off balance just a little bit as a defender, and she's gonna use it. Bradley's shot is denied, Tar Heels can push. Look at her show when she runs. Kelly, the shot fake to the basket, and Deja Kelly will shoot a pair. Even though she hasn't shot the ball well from distance, she has the reputation of being a good shooter, forces the defense to rush out on her. Nice little head fake, take it to the basket. So Kelly, who only had two points in the first half, up to 11 points for the game. She is three of three from the line. That complete score line remains intact. Seven assists, five rebounds. And Natalie talked about it earlier, but Carolina was actually her last offer. She received her first offer in sixth grade. I don't even think I really knew what college was in sixth grade. <laughs> it's a loose ball foul against Osby. That is the third on Osby. Third on Carolina in this fourth. Gets from the mid range. And again, a loose ball foul. Gonna go against Morris underneath, banging with Shatenge down there for Carolina. Well, they're actually gonna get Shatenge on that. Malu Shatenge, her first, team's fourth. For TCU in the bonus as Paulina Perez comes on and Ton Harris enters. Malu, the only player left over from the first year that Courtney Banghart was the coach here in Carolina. Shatenge the niece of the legendary Dikembe Mutombo. Deep triple, Tywo continues to feel it from distance. You know, I gotta tell you, when she came to Carolina the first time I had seen that note that she was Dikembe Mutombo's niece, I thought she's gotta have the finger whack, but I've never seen it, at least in the games I've been here though. Well, maybe today is the day. <laughs> well, that looked a little reminiscent of Mutombo. That time it was Patricia Morris inside, although she has whistled for the foul. First foul, foul number 32 for 
And that'll bring us to the media timeout. 66-41, a comfortable cushion for North Carolina late in this fourth quarter. So? The new iPhone 14 Pro, it's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible. And you'll get our best deal. Nice, but everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every, every iPhone. Okay, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. Best one yet. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off iPhone 14 Pro. Are you coming for my job? It's Tim Tebow in a Verbo. Where you get the whole place to yourself. So it's always just you and your gators. A dominant second half continues as we take a look at North Carolina's upcoming schedule. Kyle, they welcome the Bulldogs of South Carolina State to town on Wednesday. Then they embark on four road games, including the Phil Knight Invitational uh, on the 24th and 27th, and then the ACC Big Ten Challenge on December 1st at Indiana. And that is the game that I'm really interested in because Indiana is a lot like Carolina in that a couple of years ago, they had a big time recruiting class. They're now yeah. veterans. They made a nice little run last year towards the end of the season, and they've got some high hopes. So for Carolina and Indiana both, that'll be a real good measuring stick early in the season. Eva Hodgson. Hits on both John Gross, Kyle Straub, Natalie Bodie. So happy to have all of you with us on this Saturday afternoon. North Carolina just minutes away from its 17th consecutive regular season non-conference win. Mid-range jumper rims out, rebound snatched by Kelly. And Courtney Bankhard has been dominant in these games. 24-2 non-conference regular season games, 16-1 here at Carmichael. As Osby Gets to the basket and draws the foul. Took on the double team there, still able to beat it and get the foul call. Well, Courtney Bankhart's story is remarkable. You look at that number, 30 and 4 in November and December. She came from Princeton. This is her fourth season in Chapel Hill. 11 postseason appearances in 15 seasons overall. Now, when she was younger, she was a soccer, basketball, and tennis player. Soccer was actually her main sport. She ended up playing basketball at Dartmouth, had a legendary career there. And after four years as an assistant at Dartmouth, went to Princeton, was in some ways doubted because she was so young. She had a ton of success at Princeton, built them into the powerhouse program they are now. Takes the UNC, UNC job and has picked up where she left off at Princeton. Don't forget, she's pretty smart too. Yes. Bachelor degree in neuroscience, master's degree in writing. Got them both from Dartmouth. She, she's kind of done it all in her life so far, but I like the quote she had when she got the job here, which was, you know, everything was so awesome for her at Princeton. Loved the program, loved everything about it. But as a coach, you're looking for one of those prop top programs and Carolina to her, was the top program, and that's where she's hoping to get him to. She had offers year after year to leave Princeton, but was waiting for that one. She found it in Carolina. We talk about how she's done everything. Well, she's also done some very adventurous things. She has uh, she hitchhiked through Alaska, left a, a tour that she was on as Taiwo draws the foul. She was hiking a mountain and found out they were going to be hiking the same mountain for three straight weeks. So she decided to leave that trip with a friend that has hitchhiked through Alaska. She's also bungee jumped off the highest bungee jump in the world in Switzerland. So she says that she has just an adventurous spirit. I'd, I'd say so. <laughs> the bungee jumping I'm all for. The let's just go randomly hike through Alaska. There's a lot of wildlife out there you got to deal with. Not even people, just the, the animals alone and then the weather. But she's here so she must have done a good job at it and enjoyed herself she survived that's for sure and she <laughs> said that the mentality she lives by is that life is to be lived and that's something that she tries to preach to her players as well she also did something called canyoning have you heard of this canyoning i have not it's whitewater rafting without the raft she did that in switzerland um, she said it's actually illegal in the u.s <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of speechless right now. Whitewater rafting without the boat. Correct. All right. John Williams open. 
Left it a bit long. A nice play. Heads up play by Poole to knock that one off of a TCU player while she was going out of bounds. Tony Poole gets some instruction from Courtney Bankart. When it came to the bungee jumping, she, she said that she called her parents strategically in the middle of the night, so her parents wouldn't really know what they were agreeing to when they said yes to her Catch bungee jumping. a little sleepy. Yep. <laughs> Kelly from the mid-range. Oh, she'll hit that nine times out of ten. A little bit off there, but a great feed on the offensive oh, rebound. Oh, Chitenge oh, brings the Tar Heels over the 70 mark. Oh, Gotta oh, love oh, when big finds big down low. First action for Breon White. Her attempt just to bid off rebound by Chitenge. Hell ball will give it to TCU. And both coaches have very interesting stories. I mean, Reagan Peebly, Natalie talked about it before, but her building of Utah State built that program from scratch, ended up and nine seasons leading them to a couple of WNIT appearances. It takes a lot of guts to say, you know what, I want to become a coach, and if my opportunity is that I have to create a program, then I'm going to go ahead and do that. And she was quite the player back in the day in her own right at draft pick in the 97 WNBA draft. Con Williams has the steal. A tenth steal for the Tar Heels, coast to coast. So it makes her such a fun player to watch the length that you just saw there. The defense gets set up, but she's still able to take two big steps, curl that ball, and come near side. And she is one of the many players that Courtney Banghart thinks is a chance of being a first-round draft pick in the WNBA. And Coach Banghart knows a thing or two about that. Has coached multiple top ten draft picks to turn over. Uh, the bounce pass. She's coached multiple top 10 WNBA draft picks, but she feels that everyone from Deja Kelly to Usby, Will Todd Williams, and a few others. Check out the look from Todd Williams. See it on the replay. Stutter step, took a couple others. She knew she got away with it. Oh, that reaction tells you everything, doesn't it? <laughs> Harris wide open. Just can't get it to fall. Paris now 0 of 5 from distance. First time we've seen Carolina go with a big lineup here where you've got Shatenge, Poole, and Adams all on the court at the same time. You've got a 30-point lead, minute and a half. I think Coach Banghart just trying to see how things work out on the court now while you've got the opportunity to. You never know what games may dictate, what an opponent may dictate down the road. So a couple of free throws on the way for Taiwo. And, and you look at Carolina, most of the times in situations like this, up by 30 late in a game, you're going to empty the bench, right? Well, they don't, they don't have a bench. They have 12 players on this roster in total, only nine of whom are available today. It's so different from last year, too, because all nine of those players have played and they played significant minutes. Last year's team, you would have seen six players, and then they'll empty the bench here at the end. But the progress that... Adams has made, having some players that are hurt not being able to be there. Zelaya coming along now as a junior. You've got those depth pieces that you're okay bringing off the bench and putting into the game before it's, hey, we're all wrapped up, let's just get some experience. It's, no, we're still in a battle, but I trust you. Taiwo hits both and she'll head out. That's probably it for Tomi Taiwo, who, who I think has been very impressive. 15 points for her, three of eight from distance, four of four from the line. One of a handful of players who could be some pretty a pretty big time talent come Big 12 season. Also has three is uh, three rebounds, a couple of assists. So she, she's helped out in all facets. One of six newcomers from the transfer portal. Cool knocks down the mid-range jumper, but as we've talked about throughout, just two teams in two very different situations. But either way, both teams can get a lot out of this one. How about Bradley? who knocks down the three-pointer. That is something TCU has to do more in the game, and I'm sure they'll work on it in practice, but having Emily Fisher drive and kick to the open guy on the three, wherever it is, it has worked for them. Yeah, it's been the coin a bit. Nine of 23 from distance. Let's 
Tara Manumaleunga from Australia, an Arizona transfer. White with 10 to shoot. Fisher. Double cross. Manumaleunga, deep three. Off the mark, a foul underneath. Tar Heels are in the bonus, so free throws on the way for North Carolina. To the line to shoot two for the Number 21, will shoot a couple. You just got to look at Courtney Banghart, who will move to 25 and 2 at UNC in non conference regular season games. Chitenge had a big freshman season in all freshman team selection of the ACC. Production has dipped a bit since then. But can play a big role, a big physical player at six foot three. So TCU will take on UTSA next Wednesday. And they can't get a shot off. Turnover number 24. And North Carolina will move to 2-0. and oh. A dominant victory over a Power 5 opponent in the Horned Frogs of TCU. 75-48 the final. It was a slow start for the Tar Heels, but really played well in the second half. Ended up with five players, double figures scoring. Six with at least five rebounds in the game. Just overall, I thought they played a good game. Some things to work on for both sides, but early season game, good measuring stick for them. For TCU, what jumped out to you? Because it's a team that has so many new pieces. There are good things. You saw it there. They, they've got the ability to shoot the three. They knocked down three of them today. When they share the ball, they've got, they've got to find the open player. But I think there's still some work to do within their system, how they want to run that offense to get some more open looks. 